Hello, Mike Morris here in the Gorilla Shop with part three of how I machine a fidget spinner. In today's video, I'm going to show you my process for machining the buttons of a fidget spinner. And the first thing I have to do to do that is to take this one foot piece of 145 tellurium copper round bar and cut it into approximately half inch sections. So let's do that now. Okay, so like I said, um, these are cut to about, well, to exactly 0.49 inches in length. And then after that, I do like I do did the uh, bodies and I clean up the burrs around the edges so that it fits into the fixture properly. I don't have any burrs hanging on in the bottom that will uh, stop it from laying flat. Okay, so now that I have the round bar cut into smaller sections like this, I machined this into a button. And just like before, there are two operations, one on the top and one on the bottom. So let me show you the fixture I use to hold these pieces. right here. Now this fixture holds two pieces. When I first uh, bought this fixture I was hoping that I could do four at a time because there's there's two more slots here but what it did was it positioned the buttons too close together and I couldn't machine between them. So let me show you how I uh, put these pieces on this fixture. This is a Saunders Machine Works modular vise with turret grips. So I push in this bottom plate and secure it against the stock. Then I tighten down this bottom plate. The top plate is held on by those two large screws on top both of them have huge chamfers on them that match the chamfers that are on that top plate. But the chamfers on the top plate are a little bit elongated. So when I tighten down these top two uh, screws that I'm about to do right here, it pushes that top plate in toward the, the stock. So go back and forth and uh, make sure that it's all even and every time I turn it, it's pushing in a little more the teeth on those uh, turrets, the turret grips. And so if you're a machinist, you might want to check out this uh, Saunders Machine Works modular vise. Holds everything nice and tight. So here I am probing the uh, stock going around the edge of the button to get the boss center of the button. So that gives me my X and Y. And then I am going to probe for Z right here. So this first operation is actually the bottom side of the button. So this is a stainless steel one, but we're going to be machining. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on, focus, 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 please. Oh, I'll just have to back off. It's actually the bottom side of the button where the uh, screw, grub screw, goes in, and we get just about all the well, we get all the depth that we need on this cut. So you can see this little mark right here. This is where the fixture tooth, or the teeth of the uh, fixture cuts into it to hold that in place. So it's actually only held by this much and that allows us to machine all of the profile and all of the bottom side of the button. Now this is the, uh, this is the program in 
Pathpilot, which is a software I use for the tour mock. So it gives you a representation of the way it looks right there on the pallet. And I can watch as it makes all of the toolpath cuts and the entire operation from here is animated. So that's pretty cool too. All right, so let's go and um, start with the first pass. Okay, so I have to pause the video here and give you a fair warning. This next footage is disturbing especially if you're a machinist. It's downright traumatic. I set the Z axis uh, at the wrong place. I set it too low. I should have probed a lip that was on the fixture and instead I probed the base of the fixture. So it moved all the tool paths down which is no bueno. So uh, if you're squeamish about uh, machine failures you may want to fast forward 30 seconds. Here we go. Oops! Golly, that sucks! Wow. Okay, let's do this the right way. So luckily when it uh, had the little snafu there, I was right there available to stop it before I broke the end mill. The end mill actually survived. It looks good. This is the same end mill. So I reprobed it at the correct depth. And here we are cutting the profile of the button. I'm speed it up a little bit here. And we go the other way just to make sure we have a nice finish. And then we're going to move on to this next cut, which uh, cuts out the post that goes into the bearing and gets threaded. And this is the rough cut. And then this next cut we will cut the actual size of the post which creates a lip on the bottom that the bearing sits on. And here's a little different angle of this rough cut here. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, now let's do this uh, cut, very precise cut for the bearing to slip on top of. And it creates that lip down at the base so that the bearing doesn't touch the uh, face of the button. Okay, now we are facing off this post so it's the right length. Little spiral toolpath there. I like that toolpath. It creates a really cool uh, machine finish as you can see right here. So after that we're going to bore a hole that we are going to then cut threads into. Okay, so instead of tapping uh, the grub screw holes, um, I do something called thread milling. The reason why I do that is because I make spinners out of all kinds of metal, out of copper, brass, stainless steel, titanium, Timascus, zirconium. So uh, after breaking about a dozen taps, uh, trying to tap uh, titanium, I decided to uh, start thread milling them. So that's why I thread mill them. Um, it's just easier, keep it right there on the, um, on the mill, 
and just thread mill. And so thread mill in thread milling is I don't know if you can see this or not um, is uh, a process by which this tool goes in. It has uh, one row of teeth all the way around. It goes in, and then it goes in a circular path up and it makes cuts like that and that cuts the thread into the inside of that board hole for the grub screw to screw into. So the thread mill goes into the bottom and it cuts out in a circular pattern up and I do it I do three passes each pass goes in a little deeper into the wall so I have a nice thread inside that hole Works perfect. All right, so now I'm going to put a small chamfer around the bottom of the button. Uh, when I flip this button over, uh, doing a smaller chamfer gives me more real estate to grab onto. And then, of course, I chamfer the top of that post and the inside of that post. And then the last thing that I do is I go across and I face it one more time, getting rid of any of the burrs that may have happened from that chamfer. Make it nice and smooth. All right, so after I machine a few of these buttons, I want to check a few things. I want to make sure that my grub screw goes in properly. When I tighten it down, it feels right. It's easy to screw in. A little bit of resistance, but easy to screw in. It screws in straight. So I'm good with that one. And then another thing I do is I go ahead and... Uh, ah, it would go out of focus now. Let's see if I can get it back. Come on. Alright, down there. Now another thing I do is I go ahead and put the other button on it and of course this is going to look crazy when I spin it because it's not it hasn't been machined but I just want to make sure I get a good even spin on it make sure nothing touches it all looks even yeah looks good okay so that's it for the first operation of the buttons. Um, once these get done, you know, I showed you a little bit of inspection that I do after this first operation. Um, that lets me pass this guy on to the second operation. Um, but after the second operation, there's much more, there's some really thorough uh, quality control that goes into these spinners once they're machined and cleaned. And if it doesn't pass uh, certain tests and it doesn't get sold at full price um, so yeah that's the that's the first operation for the buttons I'll be doing the, the the next video will be the second operation of the button which I think is the funnest one to watch because that operation we actually make the dish in the top of the button clean up the sides put that big nice chamfer on the uh, around the outside and um, it's just a lot of fun to watch that machining go down. So, until next time, take care of yourself.